Welcome to the Flint Catholic Podcast. I'm Father Tony Smila. And I'm Michael Hasso. We're on the very edge of the end of Lent. How do you feel that Lent is like, we're in the home stretch of Lent? I'm feeling good. Yeah. It passed pretty quickly. It passed super quickly. Like, yeah. really, really, even though it's later than it normally is, um, yeah. it's, it passed pretty quickly. So, uh, Palm Sunday is this coming Sunday, and by the time it's yeah. released, it's probably going to be just past Palm Sunday. Yeah. And, uh... Palm Sunday is a day that gives me a little angst, though. Why is honest. that? Because every, like, you wait the whole year holding on to these palms, and Ash Wednesday, I always forget to bring them in every to time. make the ashes. Every time. Right. I, like, I was, I was wondering that this year. I was like, does anyone remember to? No. <laughs> no. Here's a dirty little secret. We, um, we buy the ashes wholesale from, like, oh. the, the church store company. Oh, man. I know, right? That's awful. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. One day you need to take we'll... the chance to like legitimately have a liturgical burning I'm... every so often. You if, know, if fire is involved, I'm always down yeah. for it. So you know that. I was like... gonna say Easter vigil must be like your time. Okay, so <laughs> if I have the time, I'm going to insert the video of my Easter fire from last year into this. Yes, I went all out. I bought my own fire pit for the Easter fire for last year. Nice. Yeah. Hopefully, it got inserted in and. I don't go halfway. Our yep. Easter fire, if it can't legitimately be in danger of burning the whole church down and the whole block down, it's yeah. not an Easter fire. Yeah. Where I'm from, it used to be like pallets piled up. Yeah. That's a dream of mine. We just, <laughs> we just, we just burnt a tree on fire yeah. last year. Just I was going to say, you'll probably need a rural parish at some point in order to do that. <laughs> That's probably true. Just tell Bishop you went like one year at, I don't even know where. Yeah. Westphalia or some, know. someone I, somewhere like pretty rural. I don't know if I could do a country parish. I've been in the city my entire yeah. life. Like my entire life I've lived in a city. Wow. I think Jackson is the smallest town I've ever lived in for any <laughs> amount of time. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I know. I mean, if maybe if you count Flushing. Flushing, I lived there yeah. for a year. So it's like a burb of Flint, though. Yeah. So, you know, you're still like There's in spots Flint. that are rural. I was downtown. I'd give flushing. it to you if that's the most downtown flushing. If that's the most rural that you've gotten, yeah, we'll that's, give it. To that's you. about it. So, city slicker here. Yep. So let's talk about Palm Sunday. So what I'd like to do in this episode is just walk through Holy Week, and uh, what is each day about? Why is this week important, and why do I? I mean, I love this week. Holy Week is fantastic, yeah. and really, even as a priest, like it, it kind of feels like Finals Week. <laughs> in, in a that's sense, so funny. As a student, it feels like Finals Week where. Um, like the, the day-to-day of the parish just kind of ceases on Holy Week, right? You're not like yep. sometimes the parish really isn't open in the same way. The usual day-to-day activities of the parish have stopped. Kids are out of school. Well, maybe not all the kids, right? You guys don't get out until like Thursday. Yeah. Do you have a whole day on Thursday or half day? I think it's a half day. Okay. I think so too. I, we were just talking. I think they said it might have been a full day on Thursday. I'm like, what? Ugh. That reminds me, I still need to get a sub for Thursday. <laughs> Yikes. I forgot about that. I was going to say, thinking through your whole yeah, classroom right? management plan and yeah. stuff. Shoot, because I want on I mean, air. If I don't show up at the Chrism Mass, like, the bishop's yeah. going to be mad at me. So I should probably go to the Chrism Mass. Yep. All right. Anyway, shoot. That, that just popped in my head. Um, now I'm like, I don't remember what I was talking about. Now I'm thinking, oh, Palm crap. Sunday, Palm Holy Sunday. Week. Holy it's week like sounds, finals oh, it's like week. finals week. That's right. That's what I was talking about. It's like finals week where the day-to-day of the parish just ceases to ex- exist. But as a priest, you're like cramming for each liturgy. You're like, you're in the books. You're like trying to remember how to, how you do it from yeah. a year ago. Cause you only do it once a year. And so you do all this cramming, all this studying, and then boom, you have your final exam, which is the liturgy itself. Yeah. And then as soon as that liturgy is done, boom, you're on to the next one. Yeah. It's, it's kind of amazing to like, just working for a parish kind of being a little bit more behind the scenes and it's like i've talked to so many priests where it's like they've been priests for a while maybe like maybe even like five ten years whatever and it's still like i still kind of get that vibe almost like almost like it's you know their first time doing it just because it's like you know easter vigil really the whole triduum and then easter vigil it's like you only do it once a year and it's so different that's right that it's just it's crazy and there's so many different pieces to it and just, yeah. yeah, like which one does the the full readings with, with all the audience participation and which one, you know, it's, yeah, it's all over the place. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fun though. I really enjoy Holy Week and yeah. 
I I had one question about that since you brought up the readings. Yes. How many readings do you normally do for like Easter Vigil? Because I know there's so many. You've got lots of options. Um, I I really haven't been in too many uh, places where I can like actually make the choice myself. Okay. So you could do up to seven Old Testament readings, I yeah. think, and then there's like another two uh, New Testament readings and the Gospel, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, I think I've counted like eleven before, or something like something like ten or if eleven. You, if you it, like do greater, all yeah, of if them. You, yeah, there's, which most don't. I, which most don't. I don't think I've ever been at a parish that did like all of the options of what could be done. I may be mistaken. Again, we only do this once a year, right? So like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to remember what I did last year. Yeah. Last year I did the Triduum at St. Matt's. Yep. I think I may have done them all. Oh, really? I think I did. Um, at least I know I wanted to because we weren't bringing anybody into the church because COVID, right? Yeah, so we yeah. didn't bring anybody in at St. Matt's. So I'm like, well, let's just do them all then. We got the yeah. time. Yeah. So I, I might That's have done sweet. them all last year, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I love that because it does like, it's just really cool because when you read them all, it's really all of salvation history. It's true. Like a little... This is true, but we're not. We're, we're we're like a week ahead of where we we are right now. Sorry, sorry. We'll come back. Go ahead. We'll get we'll get back to the Easter Vigil. Promise. So we start with Palm Sunday, which for us in this timeline that we exist in right now is this coming Sunday. For your timeline, it was probably just this past Sunday. Um, yep. What I love about Palm Sunday is like the tone completely shifts. So Jesus, um, for a lot of the Gospels and a lot of pieces, he's got what's called the messianic secret, where mm. he's like showing some people like he is like someone special. He's someone who is uh, doing all these miracles, all these works, all these wonders. But then he tells a lot of people, but don't tell anybody I did this. Right? He's keeping a secret because it's not yet his time. And, and really throughout the Gospels, you see that theme. It's not yet my time. It's not yet my time. Well, that ends here. It is now his time. And he announces to the whole world that he is king. The long-promised king of Israel. God had promised to David so many years ago that a, a descendant of David would, roll, would reign on the throne forever. And so, th so this is being fulfilled now in this moment. And so the same people who would shout for his crucifixion just a few days later would now shout, Hosanna, which is an Aramaic, Aramaic um, word for praise. Uh, Hosanna. And the liturgy begins with this Hosanna. In fact, it's one of my favorite parts of the, this liturgy at the very beginning. Um, that chant at the beginning is so beautiful. Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. Such a cool chant. I love That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. So that whole mass on Palm Sunday begins with that chant. But they don't really understand what Jesus is planning to do. Um, they're ready for him to supplant the Romans, to reestablish the kingdom of Israel. Um, but that's not what he's there to do. And so a few days pass. Jesus lets them think this at the moment. He's not telling them, well, actually, you're all wrong. I'm not here to kick out the Romans. He doesn't say that. He allows it to happen. A few days pass. And that brings us to Holy Thursday. Holy Thursday, this is a great day for us priests. I love Holy Thursday. So in the morning, we all gather at the cathedral um, for the chrism mass, which is where the oil of the sick, the oil of the catechumenate, and the sacred chrism are consecrated by the bishop for the next year. I think I told a story earlier um, about uh, how when I was a transitional de deacon, it was me and, uh, at the time, Deacon Joe Campbell were next to the bishop as the oils were being brought forward at the chrism mass. And as the sacred chrism was brought forward, that's when it like dawned on me, just in a few months, that oil is going on my hands to ordain me a priest. And it just like blew my mind. It was so cool. Such a great moment. Chrism mass is awesome. Um, what's really fun about that mass too is Bishop Boye at the homily, he always, you know, the, the church is packed, right? Um, people come to the chrism mass from all over the diocese. And, and at the homily, he says, uh, well, I apologize to everyone, but I'm going to preach to my brother priest now. And he preaches to us, which is cool. We don't get that too often. And he preaches yeah. right to us as priests because this is where this is a day of celebration for the priesthood. Um, it's the day that the presbyterate is instituted, that, that Jesus institutes the priesthood on this day. Um, and we see this in the evening liturgy of the Last Supper. So um, it's always a fun day. Um, a lot of, all the priests of the diocese come together and uh, um, 
we have the, the Chrism Mass, and then later on in the evening, we all go back to our parishes and ha celebrate the Mass of the Last Supper. Jesus washes the feet of the disciples and tells them that just as he has washed their feet, so they are to do to others. So that's Holy Thursday. Any thoughts? So. Yeah, I just... I, I was just thinking about the Triduum, and one of the things that I love is just how festive it feels in a way. Like it, especially um, as I've gotten older, it feels more and more like a family family reunion yes. in a way. Oh my gosh, yes. Where like it, you know, all these family traditions, maybe it's, maybe it's even local parish traditions of like our parish always does, you know, X, Y, Z or does, you know adoration in a particular way on holy thursday or yep. whatever the case is it's just i love that it to me those those three days in particular that feels like in a way family time for yes. the church As and it it's should. beautiful yeah it should it should feel that way yeah we're all coming together and we're going to experience all the different emotions throughout these days yep and uh, yeah it's awesome yeah. so good so that brings us to good friday um I think this day is often, it's very self-explanatory, but it is so, so deep. We just keep diving deeper year after year as we meditate on the death, the passion of Jesus Christ. What does it mean that God died in order to save us? And I know I'm theologically correct because uh, of that, that quiz we took a while back, <laughs> that God died. I know I keep going back to that. I'm, I'm, I'm not bitter. There's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> not bitter there's just some salt rubbed on those just wounds a little bit just a little bit <sighs> right what does it mean that god died in order to save us sin and death were conquered on the cross like this ah and, and that's why i think too what i love about friday is there's a lot of emptiness in that day as well yeah right um there's the uh the service right in the middle of the day right at noon and then and then you walk away and you're meant to just meditate on what just happened Right? Just a few days ago, Palm Sunday, we were welcoming in the Savior, the King. Now now he's dead on a cross. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Good Friday also has the Tenebrae service, which is, I think, one of the most powerful things. I love the Tenebrae service. So uh, 8 o'clock, St. Mary's, 8 p.m. at St. Mary's in the, in, on the east side in Flint. Um, we're doing Tenebrae. And... Uh, I believe that got canceled. Actually. I believe I uncanceled. Oh, it. you uncanceled I it. Uncanceled nice. It. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm doing it. I'm going to, I'm going to lead the Tenebrae at St. Mary's. So, okay. uh, <laughs> I know I had to really like be careful when I uncanceled. I'm like, I hope I'm not stepping on any toes, but I'm uncanceling it. Cause I want to do it. Cause it's nice. better, better, better than nothing. Right. So, yeah. 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 Eight o'clock St. Mary's we're doing Tenebrae. Um, so Tenebrae goes through, right. The crucifixion, it goes through that. Um, but we do it in the dark. And we're in the church. There's 14 candles when we start. And as we walk through the progression, boom, another candle goes out. Another candle goes out. And we're meant to just sit there and meditate and be with Jesus. Eventually, it's going to get completely dark. And we're there in the tomb with Jesus. And we're just meant to sit there. Oh, so good, right? Yeah. Ah, um, meditating in a, in like, all using all of our senses, right? You hear it. I'm not going to give away how we hear it, but we're going to hear it. Uh, you're going to see. You're going to see nothing, right? It's going to be black, dark. Um, I love that about the church that we use our senses in that way. So tenebrae, come to that if you've never done that. Yeah, or find a tenebrae ser service near you. Correct. There's, they're all over the place, but I really never heard about them until college. Yeah, and they're it's really cool. Yeah. Really cool experience. Uh, I, th I I agree with you, and I wonder if it's because there's maybe have. Maybe maybe there's been a resurgence in the desire for Tenebrae. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know the answer to that. So that brings us to my favorite day of Holy Week, Holy Saturday. It's the most eventful for sure. Mo yes. <laughs> yes. It's an empty day. Yeah. Right? Like what happens on Holy Saturday? Funny story Ooh. about that. <laughs> yes. I didn't realize that, you know, Jesus is in the tomb on Holy Saturday. So one time I mistakenly went to an adoration chapel on Holy Saturday and I was like, Oops. yeah, I know the, Oops. the one day. A year. <laughs> Jesus isn't there. Yeah. Yikes. I know. Oh, that's actually kind of funny. <laughs> what I do want to do for this section here is uh, what is happening, right? What I love about Holy Saturday is again, that time to pray and meditate. That, I mean, that's obviously the overrunning theme of Holy Week, right? Pray, pray. Yeah. Figure out like, 
pray about what just happened and what's happening. Um, but what happens on Saturday? That's always fascinated me because um, to get, especially to, to put yourself in the place of the apostles, what are they thinking? Like, what if they've just experienced Jesus for three years and then in the blink of an eye, boom, it's gone. And they're like, uh, what just happened? And so to put yourself there, like, what is, what is happening here? And that's the question that uh, brings us to one of my favorite texts in the entire church. It's called The Harrowing of Hell. It's an ancient homily um, that's given in, in for priests and uh, um, the breviary. This is the, the, off, the daily office, the reading for that uh, on Holy Saturday. And so I want to read that because it's so good. What is happening? Today there is a great silence over the earth, a great silence and stillness. A great silence because the king sleeps. The earth was in terror and was still because God slept in the flesh and raised up those who were sleeping from the ages. God has died in the flesh and the underworld has trembled. Truly he goes out, truly he goes to seek out our first parent like a lost sheep. He wishes to visit those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. He goes to free the prisoner Adam and his fellow prisoner Eve from their pains, he who is God and Adam's son. The Lord goes into them holding his victorious weapon, his cross. When Adam, the first created man, sees him, he strikes his breast in terror and cries out to all, My Lord be with you all. And Christ, in reply, says to Adam, And with your spirit. And grasping his hand, he raises him up, saying, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. I am your God, who for your sake became your son, who for you and your descendants now speak and command with authority those in prison. Come forth, and those in darkness have light, and those who sleep rise. I command you, awake, sleeper. I have not made you to be held a prisoner in the underworld. Arise from the dead. I am the life of the dead. Arise, O man, work of my hands. Arise, you who are fashioned in my image. Rise, let us go hence, for you and me and I in you. Together we are one undivided person. For you, I, your God, became your son. For you, I, the master, took on your form, that of slave. For you, I, who am above the heavens, came on earth and under the earth. For you, man... I became as a man without help, free among the dead. For you, who left a garden, I was handed over to Jews from a garden and crucified in a garden. Look at the spittle on my face, which I received because of you, in order to restore you to that first divine inbreathing at creation. See the blows on my cheeks, which I accepted in order to refashion your distorted form to my own image. See the scourging of my back, which I accepted in order to disperse the load of your sins, which was laid upon your back. See my hands nailed to the tree for a good purpose, for you who stretched out your hand to the tree for an evil one. I slept on the cross, and a sword pierced my side for you, who slept in paradise and brought forth Eve from your side. My side healed the pain of your side. My sleep will release you from your sleep in Hades. My sword has checked the sword, which was turned against you. But arise, let us go hence. The enemy brought you out of the land of paradise. I will reinstate you, no longer in paradise, but on the throne of heaven. I denied you the tree of life, which was a figure, but now I myself am united to you, who am life. I posted the cherubim to guard you as they would slaves. Now I make the cherubim worship you as they would God. The cherubim throne has been prepared. The bearers are ready and waiting. The bridal chamber is in order. The food is provided. The everlasting houses and rooms are in readiness. The treasures of good things have been opened. The kingdom of heaven has been been prepared before the ages. There's, awesome. There's so much in there. Like we could do a whole episode just on the heroin of hell. It's just so good. Right? I think we did. I don't know if we I did a whole episode. I think we did a year ago. We I know, did talk I know about I've it. read this a year ago. Yeah. And like, I would not mind reading this every year. Yeah. I'm going to read this to all my freshmen five times that day. And it's just, mm. there's so many pieces in here. So read the harrowing of hell. I think my favorite part of it 
was when Jesus said to Adam, and with your spirit. Mm. And then I knew he had the new translation of the liturgy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This is true. This is true. My favorite part was all of it. Your favorite part was all of it? Yeah. Yeah, that was a good part. There's a part right at the end. Um, I will reinstate you no longer in paradise, but on the throne of heaven. Yeah. Oh. And the cherubim <gasps> shall worship you. Ooh. Yeah, because God wants to share everything yeah. with us, right? Including his divinity. And that brings us to Easter Sunday, the resurrection. And St. Paul says, I think in 1 Corinthians, if Christ was not raised from the dead, your faith is in vain. It means nothing. If Jesus wasn't raised from the dead, none of this means anything. This is proof that Jesus has conquered sin and death on the cross. Proof that his death meant something that he was God and man, that he was able to bridge that gap between God and man. That's why the resurrection is so important. We, yeah. Our faith means nothing without it. The hot, highest feast of the year. Mm. So when we come back from break, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, see how well you know the Easter traditions from around the world. We're going to see <laughs> here some really weird ones, and I want you to guess what part of the world okay. it's from. Okay. All right? So we'll see you on the other side of the break. Welcome back to the Flint Catholic Podcast. You ready to play a game? I am. All right. So uh, I'm going to describe the Easter tradition and you're going to tell me maybe a region of the world or uh, if you can get to, to a country that this uh, tradition came out of, um, that would be the game. I'm going to aim for a city, Ooh. maybe even a street. Wow. I'm just Ooh, there we go. <laughs> All right, so uh, Easter holidays and traditions around the world see kids scavenging for eggs made of chocolate. These eggs are painted in bright colors being planted around the front yard, back backyard, and inside the house. Uh, but this country takes us to another level with the eggs being painted in red. So it's a real bright red, and there's yellow designs across it. So all of the Easter eggs of this country are red. Um, according to this country, red eggs are a sign of victory over death, which is representation of the ascension of Christ into heaven. Hmm. Well, I'm not and, sure why. And the color red is a sign of life as well for this country. Okay. I'm not sure why, but my initial reaction to this was the Netherlands. Ooh, Netherlands. Uh, so you're, you're close to the area of the world, um, just north by a couple thousand miles. Okay. So this, is, uh, this country is Greece. Oh, okay. Greece does this. Yep. Yeah, I could see that. It's a, just some of the decorative things that I've seen there. Yep. Hmm. Nice. All right. Easter holidays take an exciting turn in this country. Easter chocolates tend to become a melting affair in this country. There's a big hint. Ah. Uh. So the country turns to something they do best. Tobacco. <laughs> Easter culture in this country sees locals yeah. walking into church on an Easter Sunday morning with hand-rolled tobacco and cigarettes. These smoky treats are then hung on Easter trees outside the churches. They're given away as Easter blessings to adults after the prayer service. Hmm. Isn't this one great? I would never have thought this was an Easter tradition, but apparently it is. Maybe you just threw me with the tobacco, but I'll just go for it. Cuba. Mm, close. <laughs> Papua New Guinea. So really? Not close. Okay. Papua New Guinea. Well, an island nation. Yeah. I'll give it to me. You'll give it to you. Want. <laughs> you can give it to you. You can give it to you. All right. Here's one that you're probably not going to get, but it's it's fun anyway. All right. So this country sees a lot of murder mysteries and crime, uh, crime-solving shows being aired on TV, especially during this time of year, the Easter time. So Easter mornings begin with a popular crime-based teleseries and milk cartons showcasing small murder mysteries on the side of the carton. People across the country would often retreat to the cabins in the woods or mountains and plug into these thriller mysteries on air or through no novels on Easter. Hmm. Can you give me a hemisphere? 
Can I buy a hemisphere? Can you buy Alex? a hemisphere? Northern hemisphere. Okay. Hmm. I'm I'm gonna say Eastern Europe. Yes. Okay. I mean, well, kind of. I don't know what you would consider this nation. Oh, okay. So more obscure nation. It's not Eastern an obscure Europe. nation. I'm just maybe I'm I'm just dumb and like I'm assuming it's European, but yeah, it is. It's got to be European, right? Okay, so it's not a well-known European country. It's European-ish. No, it's just because my geography kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> then in that case, I will go with what is Finland, Alex? Ooh, close, Norway. <laughs> Oh, that Norway. that really was close. It was close. <laughs> Norway is the answer. This okay. is correct. All right. We should get that on a shirt or something. Norway like is the answer. Norway is the answer. <laughs> uh, maybe. Everyone would ask us about it. This is true. This is true. Are right, you ready for this one? Yeah. Easter at home brings a whole new meaning to the term hunting for the Easter bunny in this country. Uh, so this country celebrates Easter in the form of the great Easter bunny hunt. The idea behind this hunt is to rid farmlands of invasive pests, pets with over 500 hunters vying for the coveted cup. Competition sees one hunter winning prize money of 3,500 of this country's dollars. This is uh, one country the Easter Bunny is sure to skip. <laughs> I love that ending there. Yes. Um, so where is mm -mm. the great Easter Bunny hunt? Is it Western Europe? No. Oh, okay. Then my backup guess was Canada. Oh, good guess, but no again. Okay. Nope. Then I, think, I got nothing. I think bunnies are too small there in Canada. Maybe not. Yeah. Uh, New Zealand. Oh, yeah. New okay. New Zealand. Lots of bunnies there. Interesting. Yep. All right. Here we go. Easter in this country uh, is followed by a massive family feast where one would get to see a lamb but it is not the roasted kind the lamb is a massive blob of butter shaped in the shape of a lamb i know this one the reason behind this tradition is that the locals believe that they can be sure that it will not be the devil in disguise the reason being that the devil can take form of any animal except the lamb because of its religious symbolism what is poland Ooh. alex so this doesn't say Poland, but I know. I was going to say I know too. it's a Polish tradition. This is for true, sure. so I will definitely give it to you. This says Russia. Ooh. But, okay. Which is probably true, but yeah. Poland, the Poles I know do this too. Yeah, yeah. So I figured you'd get that one, and I was going to give that one to you for sure. All right, they, this one might be my favorite, and might actually have the least to do with Easter. Um, <laughs> okay. But they do it on Easter, so here we go. Uh. Easter Sunday in this country sees a massive community event taking place in towns and villages. The celebration starts on Easter Sunday and sees families breaking eggs in a bowl and gathering in the town square. These families pour the broken eggs into a massive pan to create a massive egg dish. This egg is then consumed for lunch, dinner, and breakfast the next morning. Here's some stats on this. Um, one, one town in particular uses 5,000 eggs and is re responsible for creating uh, a 10 foot egg dish serving a thousand people in the town wow. square that's crazy what country is that i had to work really hard to not give any of that away i'm going to say switzerland Ooh, nope the word i was trying to uh very closely not say was omelet and okay. the answer is france so the tradition is said to have... To be reached, honest, if you said omelet, I don't know if I would have picked up on Omelet that. du fromage. Yeah, if you would have said that, I yes. would have... Okay, good. The cheese omelet. The tradition is said to have originated at the beginning of the 19th century when Napoleon and his army stopped there one night and were fed omelets that were so good, he ordered the townsfolk to gather all their eggs and make a giant omelet the next day. Wow. I know. Nothing to do with Easter. It has to do with Napoleon. All right, I think this one's kind of the craziest of them all. So this is this is our grand finale. You ready? I am. And I, I, I've done a little bit of research on this, and okay. The Easter celebration in this country comes in the form of an early Halloween, 
where younglings dress up as witches. Young girls and boys dress up as witches with broomsticks and baskets in the shape of pumpkin heads for treats. The tradition comes from the belief that witches, and this this is where it slightly changes from website to website. Uh, some websites say the tradition comes from the belief that witches fly to the mountains on uh, on the uh, Holy Thursday um, to prance around the devil. And this website here says they fly to Germany. <laughs> <laughs> which cracks me up not the mountains they go to germany yeah <laughs> where, where the devil is apparently i was gonna say uh, on behalf of my ancestors who are from germany <laughs> i'm offended so, so well we can go with like the mountains sure so okay. what country does this which is isn't this bizarre it is um if i had to guess Let's say Hungary. Ooh, that is a good guess. I like that one. But it's north. Finland. Ah, I was early on that guess. You were. You were early on that. I, I heard you say it and went, oh. And then that's going to yeah. make you not want to say it again. Yep. <laughs> Sad. So what do you think? Are there some weird things that happen? Yeah. People, humans are pretty weird. weird. Yeah. Humans are weird. The whole witches flying to Germany, that was pretty weird. That's a, that's a weird one. Yep. I prefer to put peeps in the microwave and, and then eat them. Yep. Yep chocolate bunnies i like i like the food yeah although i wouldn't mind going to france and having a a giant omelet that sounds good to me yeah i was gonna say that that's quite appealing actually i'm a fan that's a good one well thanks for joining us this week on the flint catholic podcast we'll see you after easter